Of course it's a soundbar killer. Look at this thing. So I made a video four years ago calling a speaker a soundbar killer. And since then, I keep seeing it over and over, soundbar killer. But should we really be surprised that a speaker like this is going to perform better than an equivalently priced soundbar? I, I don't think so. A soundbar is not about performance. It's about convenience. So what I'm more interested in is can these provide an experience that's as convenient as an equivalent soundbar? So around the same time that I made that video about the Fluon speakers being soundbar killers, I was also asking for HDMI ARC. Finally, these do have HDMI ARC capabilities, but Klipsch came out with the fives two years ago, so they kind of beat them to the punch on that. So after two years, I'm not quite as excited as I would have been had it been two years ago. So don't get me wrong, I am happy that it's there, just a little bit late. So I've spent a good amount of time listening to them here in my living room as well as in a near field situation. So I have a good idea of what they do. I've also taken some measurements. Not only do I wanna see if these can hold up to the manufacturer's claims, but I also wanna see how they compare to other speakers at their price point. It's Joe and Cell time. Oh look, adhesive. So here I have the SVS Prime Wireless Pro, about to do some listening tests. I do have my Sonic Presence binaural mics on. So hopefully you'll be able to hear some of what I'm hearing here. So definitely the first thing I've noticed is that I want to be below the tweeter. This is something I know from some of the other SVS speakers. They measure the best when you're below the tweeter, somewhere where your ear is about midway between the tweeter and the woofer. If I play some pink noise, I'm gonna let you guys hear what happens when I move around here, so. And I can tell from this one that when I stand up, it sounds different than when I sit down. So I'm gonna listen from here from now on. Let's try this other test track here. Caro by Lod Ito. All right, so the other thing I noticed is it's pretty forgiving of towing in and towing out. Um, I'm not hearing a huge difference whether I do that. There's some difference, but not anything drastic. The imaging isn't as precise as what I heard with some other speakers like the MTM100 that I just have right behind me. Um, but yeah, I think the bass response is better on these though. Let me try a few more test tracks. What I'm looking for there is just this little wood creak from the original recording that is supposed to happen like right around this area. So let me know if you guys hear it right after she says 24 hours. So on certain speakers, you can't really hear that because maybe the treble is a little bit too recessed. But on these, I can hear it loud and clear and it's where I think it's supposed to be. Test out some bass real quick. All right, so as far as bass, they're kind of what I would expect from a speaker of this size. I thought that maybe they would use a DSP to kind of enhance the bass or extend it further than I would expect, but it is about what I would expect for a five and a quarter inch woofer in an enclosure this size. Now, maybe if you have it near a wall, you might get some more boundary gain and get more bass. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just, you know, what I would expect. Now, of course, it has a subwoofer out, so I think the best case is if you were to use this 
with a small subwoofer. Maybe their SVS 3000 Micro would be a great pair with these at a desk. I mean, not a cheap setup, but I think it would sound pretty amazing. So overall tonality, I'm fine with it. Maybe a little bit bright for my taste, but I think a little bit of EQ would help with that. I don't know that they're marketing these as studio monitors, but I think that if you could take down that little notch that happens there, you'd get a nice sounding pair of speakers. I would rather it not be there, especially if you're gonna use this for some serious monitoring. If it's just everyday listening in a living room, I wouldn't really pay too much attention to that. So as far as imaging and soundstage, I think that these actually excel if you have them more at a distance. So right now I'm in a near field, I can actually reach out and touch these. But if I'm back a little bit further, maybe using these in a room, I think that they're gonna give you a soundstage that's more like having larger speakers. Near field, it's not as precise as some of the other speakers, but you know, they do provide a wider soundstage. So it's kind of a trade-off. You can either have precise or wide. It's tough to have both. So these can sound good when you have them placed further apart, whereas some of the other ones may not sound as good. As far as audible hiss, let's see here. Yeah. Pretty quiet. I hear my kids upstairs, but very little sound from these speakers. So that's good. Right now they're about 90% of the way up. Let me turn them all the way to 100. Actually, I'm impressed with how quiet the amps are. Yeah, I, I like I like it. Yes, I'm happy with that. So, okay, these can get pretty loud. I think at a distance is where these really shine. They can play loud and I didn't hear any distortion louder than I expected. So I think they traded some of that deep bass extension for louder volume. And I think that's something that I've seen with other SVS speakers because they have subs for the deep bass. So nice, very impressive actually. I like that. All right, so I'm here on their website. So let's take a look at some of their claims here. So as far as the amplifier specs, they claim 200 watts, 50 times four. So these are bi-amplified, meaning there's power going to the woofer and the tweeter. I don't have any measurement tools to confirm that that's correct. But from my experience with SPS, their measurements are pretty spot on. Transcendent sound for the modern audiophile. And down a little bit, it says that they're challenging the notion that wireless audio is just for background music. Okay, so far, I agree with all of that. These are far better than any Bluetooth speakers or what most people use. I've even reviewed the home pods before and a single one of those. Yeah, I think that they're great for background music, things like that. But if you're doing some critical listening to channel music, you're gonna need at least two speakers and most Bluetooth speakers are a single one. So yeah, even just having two of them, yeah, high five, I'll go with that. They say true two channel audio for convincing and immersive stereo sound. Yes, good for two channel audio. Yes, I can agree with that. Immersive is a little tricky because usually that refers to surround sound. So I wouldn't say immersive necessarily, but let's continue. It says digital electronic crossover for a refined and dynamic sound. And that is true because they're by amplifying this, they're not using passive crossovers. They can use the digital crossovers in here and use digital signal processing DSP to optimize the sound going to each driver. So they're not wasting any of the power that's going to each one. And they're also using DSP to flatten out the response or make it a response that they think is appropriate. So far, so good. Acoustically optimized one inch aluminum dome tweeter. They've been using that tweeter for a very long time on all their products. And the great thing about that is that the tonality of all the speakers, they, they all kind of match. You can always put an SVS speaker with another SVS speaker and tonally they sound pretty close. A high output five and a quarter mid bass driver. And I like that they didn't call it even a woofer or a subwoofer, it's a mid bass driver and that's exactly what it does. Okay, so it says it has 192 kilohertz, 24 bit DAC for high resolution streaming over Wi-Fi. So if you're using something like Tidal or Cobuzz or Apple Music, some of these that have loss of streaming, you can use this and you won't lose any signal compared to streaming it over Bluetooth. So this does stream over your Wi-Fi network that allows you to keep the high resolution, no loss. Versatile connectivity, it has an HDMI input with ARC and eARC for high resolution stereo. The difference between ARC and eARC is eARC allows you to send an uncompressed signal back to the speakers. It has a line level optical and 3.5 millimeter auxiliary jack and ethernet port. So that's kind of interesting. They could have just went the Wi-Fi route like most companies go but they've added an ethernet port, which is cool. I don't know that you need necessarily that bandwidth for audio, but it's kind of cool that they give you that option if you don't want to clutter up 
your already busy Wi-Fi network. So it's a subwoofer output for deeper heart pounding bass. And it has voice commands for supported devices. And what I found about the voice commands is it's not a direct support. There's no microphone on here. So it's not like a smart speaker per se. If I issue a command to my phone, it can send a signal to this to do whatever I want it to do, but it's not necessarily the same as this being a smart speaker. Don't get it confused. So these custom presets, if I could get them to work, I can see how they might be useful. Let's say if you use Pandora and you have a, a station that you like, you can just press one button, get that station to play. And that's for background music. So they're claiming that this is gonna be good for audiophile listening, in which case most of the time, if I'm listening and I wanna sit down, I don't have a preset. I'm just whatever mood I'm in, that's the song I'm gonna play and hopefully it's gonna play other songs that are related. So I don't know what I wanna play at that moment. But I can kinda of see, you know, they give you six options there. I can see how maybe my wife would want one for, you know, holiday, I don't know, cooking, uh, uh, dinner music, I don't know, workout music, that's a good idea. It says here, performance-driven cabinet design. Yeah, pretty much every SVS speaker cabinet that I've seen is the best in class. <laughs> I don't even know how they do at this price point. I always say that, but this gloss finish is extremely nice. Like this seems like a high end aesthetic. You know, they have the chamfered baffle here and that helps with diffraction off the side. So that's not just for looks. And just everything about this fit and finish has internal bracing. It feels solid. And I actually had a storage fire and the only thing that survived pretty much the only thing that survived were the SVS Prime bookshelf speakers. I don't know how that happened. I think maybe because they were near some diapers and those are flame retarded. But anyway, kind of a funny story. And I still have those to this day just because they survived. Now I'm gonna measure the Prime Wireless Pro. So SVS speakers typically measure pretty flat, just even the passive ones. Now these are active. And one thing I'm noticing here is there seems to be some sort of uh, something here. Resonance or something right here around 2.5K. Kind of, I don't know what that is. I checked to see if anything was rattling and nothing that I saw. Also, it's scooped out here in the mids and it's a rising trouble response. So the rising trouble, I've seen that before on some SVS stuff, but maybe not this much. So I just finished taking the sound power measurement of the SVS Prime Wireless Pro. And that's this line. So from that, you can derive this line, which is the directivity index. So this line here kind of just shows us what it sounds like all around the speaker. And so the straighter this line, the better. And so what we see here is it's good up to maybe about three kilohertz and then there's a dip and then it kind of goes up, but overall pretty smooth as I would expect from SVS. Now that issue right here at 2.4 kilohertz where there was a resonance, it's relatively smooth there. So I'm hoping that you can just EQ that out. I'm not sure why that's there in the first place. You can see it a little bit more if I smooth it a little bit less. And so still okay right here. Hmm. They're using DSP, so I'm not sure why they didn't just DSP that out. So here you can kind of see how they look on my entertainment center. The gloss finish on them actually matches extremely well. And they have grill covers so that my kids don't poke out the tweeters. Here is the SVS 3000 Micro that I've paired up with it. And I think that they're a good match. So listening to the system here in the living room, I'm pretty happy with the overall sound. The imaging might not be as precise as the MTM 100s that I previously reviewed because those were just amazing with that. But I also think that the sound stage is very forgiving. If I tow them in or tow them out, move up or down, move around the room, I'm still getting a good sound that I am happy with. The bass output here in the living room is good even without the subwoofer with the subwoofer of course it's much better i think they're good speakers in many different situations versus some speakers are great in one environment and not so great in another these can kind of just go anywhere so i just installed the dts playfy app and finishing installing these updates while we're waiting let's take a look at this remote so on the top here you can pick the input source hdmi bluetooth optical line you have your volume control here play pause mute and then to change the brightness Oh, okay, so bright, dim, off. All right. And here we have up to six different presets you can use. And I like the fact that it doesn't look like a typical Apple TV remote. So you get to name your device. I'm going to call this SVS. Here's a mistake I see a lot of reviewers making, which is 
they judge the speakers and the entire system based on the app. And I can see why that's the case, but I mean, it's just one aspect of the system. I have used the DTS PlayFi app before. I wasn't overly impressed with it. The tricky thing is that it needs to be better than the actual app itself. So let's say, for example, you use Spotify. It needs to be more user-friendly than the Spotify app, and that's probably not likely the case. The only app that I've found that is very good is the Sonos app. So we'll take a look at the PlayFi app together. It's not going to be the only way that I judge these speakers, but it will have some effect. Okay, so it can play up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. All right. Here are the different options that you have here for services. So I use YouTube Music, which is not available here. Luckily, they have Chromecast and AirPlay support. All right, so I am logged into Kobuz, and so far, it looks pretty good. I see all my playlists here. So try my test tracks. Takes a second to load. But there it is. All right. Let's see how fast it takes to skip to the next track. All right, so not super fast. So it does show the title and it shows that it's playing from Kobuz, which is pretty cool. All right, so it does show here that it is playing high res FLAC 24 bit 96 kilohertz based on this song. So that's cool. Turn the volume up and down right here, and that's pretty responsive. This app definitely seems a little bit more refined than when I last used it, which was a couple years ago. There is no way to go forward or backwards to the next track using this remote. So I can control the volume, I can get to the presets, but I can't, maybe there's a way, but from what I see, I have to use the app. So although the whole preset thing seemed cool and looked like it was gonna work, when I went to press the button, it just, it didn't go to it. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to mess around with it a little bit more. I don't wanna put too much weight on the app itself. Because at the end of the day, I can just use Chromecast with my Android phone or AirPlay if I'm using an iOS or Apple device. So for me, it just makes more sense to go into the actual Kobuz app and then here choose the SVS Prime Wireless Pro. Still works as expected. And yeah, just a different method. And let's see if it's actually faster to switch between the tracks on this one. Seems a little bit faster. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I would just rather use it this way. Here's something I really like is just how nice the volume control is. Look at that. Lots of steps between the different volumes. A lot of times there, the steps are too big and you can't dial it in and not feel on this. Awesome. Just a nice, nice way to them. So at the beginning, I asked whether this would be as convenient as setting up a soundbar. And I would say in most cases, it is. The worst case scenario is that you'll need some speaker stands. But if you have somewhere to place them, I mean, that's really all you have to consider. As far as connectivity, it's just as easy as setting up any soundbar that I've set up. So I do have some notes about this. When you do connect a subwoofer to this, high pass filter is engaged, meaning that these can play louder when you have a sub connected. I think they have it set to somewhere around 80 hertz, which is what we usually recommend for a high pass for a speaker anyway. According to my testing, you will also want to apply an 80 hertz low pass filter on your subwoofer also, because some of those extra sounds, those higher frequency sounds will get sent to the subwoofer and that's not what you want. In my case, I set it also to 80 hertz to match this one and I'm having a pretty good blend. Now, to be specific, they don't have a delay that you can add to the main speaker. so. The problem is that the subwoofer always has a little bit of delay and these need to have a little bit of delay added to them to match the sub. So there is no perfect way to blend them because I can't subtract delay from the subwoofer. So just a little nitpick, something I hope they look into in the future. They are using a proprietary cable, which is nice because it's a nice slim cable, but there's actually four wires in there because it is by amplified. That's one way to know both speakers are by amplified. So the cable is also pretty long, which means that you can spread these out and get a nice stereo image 
And that's really the issue with most soundbars. They're not wide enough to give you a nice stereo image. So there is a service port back here via USB. So if they did have to do an update to this, I'm assuming that that's one way you could do it. Overall, I can say that SVS has a track record of delivering on their promises when it comes to their marketing, everything pretty much aligned. No, no surprises there. So that's not to say that these are perfect speakers. They aren't, but they do everything well. There's nothing that they try to do that they don't do a satisfactory job of. That might not sound like the best thing I can say about these, but if you think about it, they're trying to do a lot of things. So it's not like they're just passive speakers where all they have to do is have a decent frequency response, this and that. No, they have to do that. Plus they have to do HDMI arc, plus they have to do wireless streaming. And every function that they add is more chances for it to not be good. And so the fact that it is good, it's still good, is actually an accomplishment. So yeah, they will blow out most sound bars out of the water, yeah, for sure. Just the fact that they have decent bass, the fact that you can connect your own subwoofer, the fact that you can spread them out and have a nice stereo image, all of that makes it better than most sound bars. But in some cases, I think this can actually be as good as a decent dedicated two-channel system. So for somebody who wants to get a amplifier and their own speakers this might outperform that just because they have dsp built in and many of those do not so for some of the cons i do wish that it had bass and treble tone controls i'm not able to control that with these they have a setting and they think that that's correct i would like to turn on the treble slightly maybe bump the bass more but i can't the bass on these are good they're they're decent and they're what I would expect for a speaker of this size. Nothing that's overly impressive. No crazy deep bass extension. Good. And that's something that I've seen with other SVS speakers. They don't try to push the speaker beyond its limits because they sell subwoofers and they want you to buy a subwoofer to plug into that subwoofer output, in which case you can play them loud and you can play them clear. That's the ideal situation. And that's where they shine. So if you weren't planning on getting a sub with these, then you may find that you want a little bit more deep bass extension. In my case, placing them near a wall did help. So yeah, I think it depends on the type of music that you listen to and whether you want some, you know, you want movies to shake, you're going to need a sub for those things. The DTS PlayFi app, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just happy that everything kind of works. I'm happy with Chromecast streaming and Apple AirPlay. Those seem to work fine for me. And it's ubiquitous. It works on every system. If I have an Android phone, I can do it. If I have my MacBook or if I have my iPad, I can use AirPlay to send audio to it. So I don't feel the need for that particular app. It didn't seem to add any functionality that wasn't there before. The only other thing that's tricky is the price. So these are $8.99. So that's, that's tricky. So I'm not saying that for $8.99, you can go out and just build a better two-channel system off the bat. I'm sure you can. If you find some deals, maybe buy some used stuff, maybe make your own subwoofer. There are ways to get a better sound for $8.99. But that's if you want to do those things. If you don't, this might just be a better option just because it's an all-in-one solution. You know what? Let's go to the speaker leaderboard and see where they place compared to other speakers in their categories. All right here we are at the speaker leaderboard. We have the SVS Prime Wireless Pro and it fits into the powered speakers category. On the top, we have the ELAC Navis. These are significantly more expensive. Clips the fives, the LP6 V2. So this is based on looks, build, functionality, sound quality, and value. So combination of things. And I think that this is actually gonna score very high. So although the ELACs might sound better, these have more functionality. These are on par to the Clips the fives and looks and build quality, all of the above. I would say that the Prime Wireless Pro probably sound a little bit more neutral and about the same functionality overall. Some people might like the way the fives look more, so that's understandable. The LP6 V2, I think is the best sounding of all of them, except they don't look the best. The IN5 is kind of the same thing. They have very good sound, but functionality wise, these are studio monitors, so these other ones can do more like HDMI ARC. I could also argue that the ones with HDMI arc can be above the Navis. It's just that this sounds so much better in comparison that kind of tops it just based on that. But I remember these being about $2,000, so kind of understandable. So the next category is the best powered speakers for the desktop. I would say for a desk, 
the LP6 V2 and the IN5 are great. The IN5 I think sounds even better because of the concentric driver, but the value on this is just so ridiculous. It's uh, it's they're amazing. The monolith. This is going to be an interesting one because I like the way that these sounded at a desk. This is very close at a desk. Huh? The monolith are actually slimmer, which is useful. These have a larger footprint, but they have more bass output. Hmm. The amplifier on these is quieter, so I think I might put it there. Just kind of edges it out slightly. These do have great imaging, so it's real close. These two are very close. Next, these come in at $899, so it's going to be in the under $1,000 category. On the top, we have the Encore T6 Towers. It's going to be tough for these to compete with some tower speakers. Uh, the Monolith M518HT is a 5.1 system. So the fact that it's surround sound, all that, you have to take that into consideration. Uh, the Denton 85th Anniversary, these are some of my favorite passive speakers. And then we have the fives here. What what I want to have. So under $1,000, this is more a value call. And I would say value-wise, I can't say they're the best bank for your buck, but I can say that I think for the price and their functionality, it is fair. So the cost to produce and cost to ship is probably the highest on this Encore just because they're huge. This had a real wood veneer. This also has a real wood veneer. Huh. I'm going to still put these... Huh. Maybe above the fives. The fives are less expensive now, and they do have some pretty crazy bass. I like the fit and finish on these, so it could be this way also. Yeah, this would make sense for some people if you like the wood veneer. I think most people would find that the SVS just suits them better. There's more functionality overall. So these are more expensive than the fives, and so it's understandable that they're above it. Not by much though, I'll tell you that. So last but not least, best overall sound quality, regardless of the price. We have the Larson 4.2s. I like the bass response from these and the way that the angle driver interacted with the room. The Denton 85th, just, I really like the tuning on those. Again, the ARB51 Navis, $2,000. So they sound significantly better. And the Cali Audios are studio monitors with DSP processing, so they sound excellent. The Polk Audio Reserve is similar in price, but they're passive speakers. A lot went into these. The design. Um, what else? The T6 Towers are just going to have way more bass. The B6 has way more bass, which I'm a fan of. These 5.1s are concentric, and they have a subwoofer. I'm going to go ahead and put these. Huh. This is going to be tough because a lot of these, are just they just have significantly more bass. Uh, Sync Self Alpha also has a ton of bass. I'm going to put them right here above the SVS Prime bookshelf. Even though with DSP, these will outperform this. Just the fact that these have amplifiers and DSP out of the box. I think that they have a better response than the Prime bookshelf. Lots of times you're going to connect this to an AVR that has DSP. In which case, with good DSP, it will be above the Prime Wireless Pro. So they have more potential than the Prime Wireless Pro. But out of the box, I'd have to say the Prime Wireless. Yeah, this is very tough. But you can kind of see my thought process somewhere like this. All right, so that's pretty much it. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. That's it. Take care. Bye-bye.